Welcome to the best zoo in Asia, Singapore Zoo. Ooh. In this video, I'll be going through the only right way you should be visiting the Singapore Zoo. I will help you plan the most exciting day at the zoo where you get to see all the best attractions and make your money's worth. Let's begin. There's one super easily avoidable mistake that a lot of people make when planning to come to the Singapore Zoo. At the Singapore Zoo, you cannot find any ticketing counters. Everything needs to be bought online. There are some public devices outside that you can use to buy on the spot. But the bigger problem is, some of the add-on experiences has limited availability. You may end up missing out on epic feeding experiences, or you might even not be able to get in at all. To avoid making this mistake, before your epic zoo day, get to the Manda website and buy an entry ticket. Include all the add-ons that you want to experience, the earlier that you can confirm the date of your epic zoo day, the better chances that you'll get to experience what you want. I prefer to start the day early and fresh. So personally, I took a taxi to get to the zoo. It's quite far out from the city. So although public transit options are available, they are not as convenient. You will need to take a combination of the train from Katim, Chochuka, or Springleaf, then take the connecting bus. I'll leave a link to the details in the description below. Imagine going to an all-you-can-eat buffet. You want to eat all the best stuff as much as possible, right? Going to the zoo is like going to a buffet. But please don't eat the animals. What I really meant, there are so many animals to see, but you only have one day at the zoo. So I have designed this step-by-step -step itinerary that you can follow to get the most exciting day at the zoo. To guarantee that you'll see the animal when they are the most active, this route will coincide with many of the scheduled zookeeper and feeding sessions. If you go at any other time, you might be disappointed to find that the animal is hiding or resting somewhere else. The zookeeper talk is free of charge to attend. Watching the feeding session is free of charge, but to participate, you'll have to buy the add-on in advance at $8 per portion. I'll also show you the best part of each attraction and ranking them out of 5 stars. The zoo is the least crowded right after opening and before closing. This will be the period where you get to enjoy the zoo much more peacefully. So I would advise to come here as early as when it opens at 8.30am. Once you're inside, look out for the treetop trail boardwalks on your left. You'll catch the Siamang. The Siamang is an endangered gibbon. I'm very confused why they put him here because look who's below. If one day they stop seeing him, the crocs might know where he went. The treetop trail gets a 3.5 out of 5. Next, we're gonna catch the smallest otters in the world. Perhaps also the most adorable. Right outside the treetop trail, you can find the Asian small clawed otters. They really are super adorable. From here, we follow the sheltered walkway on the right. The Gibbon Island will be on our left. Keep your eyes peeled along the tree line because you'll spot some gibbons hanging out. You'll also spot some pelicans and the red ruffed lemur. They have a very nice fur color and they get very feisty. The Gibbon Island gets a 4 out of 5. Keep moving forward, you will reach the center of the zoo, the Aming restaurant. If you thought that Aming is the owner or the chef of the restaurant, you're wrong. Aming is the zoo's late orangutan. She was so loved for being so friendly when she passed in 2008. 4,000 people turn up to her funeral. One of Aming's grandchildren, Ishta, is over there. Why I love this setup so much is because it's a whole island where the orangutans are free to roam in the island. They look like they're living their daily life. 
the ones over here are the Borneo orangutans. There's a hut over there that we're gonna go. Those are the Sumatran orangutans. The orangutan area gets a 5 out of 5. Now, we're gonna go to the amphitheater where we're gonna watch an animal presentation, the Splash Safari. We are aiming to attend the 10.30 show and as the name suggests, it's a Splash Safari. For the best view, while keeping dry, stick to the middle row, fifth row onwards. You'll be watching Pedro the sea lion who will intrigue you with all his antics. I find the Splash Safari very entertaining. So it gets a 4.5 out of 5. Now we are going to visit our more distant relatives. Exit via the big gate and head straight into the primate kingdom. We will be just in time for the keeper talk at 11 o'clock. The keeper will bring you around to meet the residents. And check out this monkey with luscious hair. So what shampoo you, you guys give them? Huh? What shampoo you guys give them? <laughs> no, they cannot like, they cannot put water on them, you know? <laughs> if you ask me, I also don't have it. Fine. Keep your secrets. My favorite animal in the Prima Kingdom is the Duke Langur. They look like they're wearing a colorful suit. For the arrays of primates and their island style exhibit, the primate kingdom gets a 4 out of 5. Next, we will be visiting a little piece of Africa. From the Duke Langur area, find this little pathway. It will bring you to the Great Rift Valley of Ethiopia, home to the Hamadrias baboons. There are also cultural exhibits in the area showcasing the livelihood of the native people and about archaeology. The baboons here are so active and lively, it was such a joy to watch. It's a 4.5 out of 5 for me. Now, we will go back to the Duke Langur area to head to the Elephants of Asia for the 11.30 elephant presentation. I'll share with you one secret, how you can get to feed the elephants for free. In this presentation, you will learn about the elephants and their care routine. There will also be the elephant pop quiz by the keeper. Any audience who gets the answer correctly will get to come forward and feed the elephants. You need to equip yourself with this knowledge. Number one, how long are elephants pregnant for? 18 to 22 months. Why do elephants fan their ears? To cool down their temperature. Why do elephants in Singapore Zoo have no tusk? Because they are all Asian female elephants. You're welcome. Right after the elephant presentation is the feeding session. I think it's worthwhile to join the elephant feeding session because you get to interact with a uniquely gentle, intelligent giant. And for that, the elephants of Asia gets a 4 out of 5. Now, we will head back to the Aming restaurant for a short lunch break. The food here is decent, and the indoor eating area is luxuriously air-conditioned. Feel free to download my custom map and itinerary from my blog. The link is in the description below. Next, the best part of the zoo. Wild Africa. We are aiming to watch the feeding of the white rhinos at 1.15. The feeding area is very close to the public area, so you don't really have to pay to have a good view of the feeding session. Next, catch the zookeeper's talk with the African lion at 1.25. And another zookeeper's talk at the super adorable meerkats at 1.30. Then we're gonna catch the fastest land mammal, the cheetah, with the zookeeper's talk at 1.35. Then the African painted dogs, also a zookeeper's talk at 1.40. Then we are going to join the feeding session with the giraffe. I highly recommend feeding the giraffe because it is done at an exclusive area. You'll be able to interact with the tall giraffe in person on the feeding platform. 
the way their tongue wraps around the food and pull their food into their mouth. So interesting. I think it's a fantastic experience, whether it be it for children or adults. Just look at core memories being created. We're not even done with Wild Africa yet. There's still the Red Hog and the Leopard. Then at 2.15, we're gonna watch the Zebra Feeding Session. And that's why the Wild Africa is a 5 out of 5 for me. Next, we're gonna have a roaring time. We'll head back towards Aming's restaurant to catch the tigers. In my first visit to the zoo, I was very excited to see the white tiger. But I was sorely disappointed when the white tiger wasn't even on exhibit. That's when I learned the white tigers and the Malayan orange tigers are on rotation. It was double disappointment for me because the tigers were lazing around at the far end of the exhibit. To avoid getting yourself disappointed, pick the right day to visit the zoo and make sure that you visit at 2.40 when there's a scheduled zookeeper talk. I came back another day and caught the beautiful, majestic white Bengal tiger. Something about their eyes are so captivating. The white tigers are absolutely majestic, very beautiful to see in person. So I'll give it a 5 out of 5 and you should definitely see them. Next, we're gonna catch the giant river puppy. Just outside the tiger exhibit, you'll see a water tank. This is the home of the pygmy hippo. They're also known as the ballerinas because they'll tiptoe to get around in the water. I find it's not too special here, so it's a 3 out of 5 for me. Our next stop is the reptile's paradise, the Reptopia. We will be passing the wild Africa again. This time, you can take your time to look around. Look out for this Reptopia sign. You will be treated with a buffet of snakes, lizards, frogs, and even spiders. For the amount of reptiles that you can see in just one place, the Reptopia is a 4.5 out of 5. Next, we are going to a very special place in the zoo where you're the one going into the animal's enclosure. Get out of Reptopia the same way that you came in and take a left. We are in the fragile forest. This is where you get truly be one with nature. You really get to be face to face with all the animals here. There's a section called the Butterfly Dome where you can make your Disney dreams come true. I really enjoyed meeting the animals here. From the flying fox, the friendly photogenic lemur, the shy elusive mouse deer, the lazy two-toed sloth, the sucky monkeys, and take in some beautiful birds. The enclosure itself is very beautifully made. The fragile forest gets a 5 out of 5. When you exit the fragile forest, don't miss out the whiskered mini monkey gentleman. Good afternoon, sir. Next, we're gonna see friends of the selfie monkey. Go further straight and you'll find a sheltered glass exhibit housing the celibus crested ape. We are aiming to attend the 415 Keeper Talk. They were quite fun to watch and I like their forehead, so it's a 4 out of 5. Next, we're visiting the movie stars from Planet of the Apes, the chimpanzees. Exit to the left and you'll find the chimpanzee island. We are aiming for the 435 Keeper Talk. I like the chimpanzee island, but I find they're not very active. So it's a 3.5 out of 5 for me. Next, continue down the road and take a left. The stars of the show here is the Big Croc, the Komodo Dragons, and the 100-year-old tortoises. Next, we're going to the Squidward Monkeys nearby the exit. The proboscis monkey is quite unique, so I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. There are a few things that I intentionally missed out. 
there is another animal presentation at the amphitheater where you can catch many rainforest animals. To me, it's a 3.5 out of 5, but I feel it's skippable compared to what I planned for the rest of the day. And I think you will need the lunch break. I also skipped the whole of Australasia because it's out of the way and I find there's not that many animals there. It's a 2 out of 5 for me. I hope you've enjoyed your animal buffet feast. You know, coming to the Singapore Zoo actually would be a huge waste of time if you don't also visit the bird paradise. So, I'll see you there.